waiting for Mike Bonclaw. That's what you get for booking people on the beach. <laughs> you should have known that, Moon. <laughs> oh, there man, there he is right there. there. Anyway, 844-766-6607. I don't talk bad about that man no more. Oh, man. I would never talk bad about a man calling two minutes late. <laughs> Michael Bonclaw, how you doing, man? I thought you were calling me. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, this this how it worked. You were supposed to call me, and since you didn't call when I told you to, I've been calling you all right. You don't want to know what I've been calling you, though. I can't be good news for you. I couldn't say it on the air. <laughs> anyway, Mike, how you my doing? Bad, man. My bad, no. man. My pause. I'm doing good, man. No, no you're good. I, I just uh, The reason I, I, I wanted to get you on today, I know that the president sends out a letter to the big oil companies, and before we get to that, the big question is if we're going to have lower gas prices July, August, or in October, November? Can you tell us that? I think that's what everybody wants to know. Man, I, I wish I had that crystal ball. Uh, I, man, I don't, I don't really see any end in sight right now. I mean, there's a supply and demand, you know, issue out there, and 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 you've got a a conflict overseas that is probably, you know, magnifying that issue. So, I, man, I really, I really don't know. But I mean, look, it's a commodity. You know, it it might cause inflation. Uh, but it is not an inflationary item. It is it is determined. The cost of oil and gas and, and gasoline is determined by by commodity. And and you know not unlike a McDonald's, you know, uh, inflation. You know, I remember getting a, a Big Mac combo back in the day for about a dollar eighty. And you know they're never going to go back down to a dollar and eighty. I no. promise you, no. gasoline would be back to two fifty one day. It's it's a commodity. It's not inflationary. Yeah, well, not if not if the Green New Deal gets through. But let's start with this: what, the letter from oh, uh, right the letter from uh, uh, the threatened letter from the from the President of the United States. And I think it's ironic that they threatening y'all, claiming you're making too much money. But when when gas and tell me if I'm wrong, wasn't all prices at a negative number just a year or two ago? We didn't. Wasn't all price? Yeah, they never. They, I noticed they never call and say, "Boy, we better help the oil and gas companies survive." And they, they can't make it at this. So. What is the uh, threat from the president? Is it real? And what are the oil companies saying? How are y'all addressing something like this when the president of the United States wants to? Of course, they, they're looking f- for somebody to blame from the policies that he's created. Yeah, of course. And, and yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, you know, they, they forgot about the last seven years, the thousand bankruptcies that, you know, our, our industry went through, uh, the struggle to keep the doors open. Yeah. And, you know, it was a, it was a seven year downturn. And, and as you said, I mean, Oil prices were at uh, twenty six dollars, and then you know during COVID they spiked down to negative thirty seven. And I mean, look, we all were we were all trying to keep our doors open, my family business included, our customers, you know. And and what they don't understand is uh, all, the the price is not determined by us, and we still have to fight through it when it's low and when it's high. Yeah, we might be able to make a little money when it's high, but for for years, for seven years, we did not make a dime. We were putting money back into our businesses to stay to keep them alive. And by the know? way, by the way, and Mike, Mike, I can vouch for that because I know your family, and, and and I had a chance to talk to you and your brother, and and y'all were talking about the struggles of trying to get over. But they don't remember the seven years that was bad. All they want is the PR to say triple profits. Nobody really understands it. So an average person watching the news looks at that and go, yeah. Hey, greedy all companies because they want that perception out there and that's not the right perception no no it, it's not it, it what a lot of people don't understand is you know you, you've got the oil company side so you know at, at loga our members are oil companies they're workers they're out there they're, they're they're drilling oil and gas wells they're working over oil and gas wells they're out in the fields all right so th- these guys sell their oil to refining companies and th- those are the ones that actually you know transport gasoline to stations you know for the most part that's not my member my, mm-hmm. my member is more the hard-working folks and what i'm going to tell you about is what a lot of people don't know is the word hedge okay mm-hmm. and a lot of oil companies still have oil hedged at 55 60 dollars because when it got to that rate uh, that number they decided to lock in because they didn't know if it's gonna go back down to 20 Mm-hmm. And so when, when they get when they when every month when they get their production report, they're having to pay a bank everything over that hedge to a bank and not to themselves. 
So they're taking a beating right now. A lot of oil companies are taking a beating on the hedge side, and the banks are making the money. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, not everybody is hedged, but a lot of people are. A lot of my members are hedged. So it's a it's 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 a part of the scenario that no one understands. People don't even think about that. But a lot of people, you know, a lot of the companies out there are not getting one hundred twenty dollars a barrel. They're getting way less than that. No, my, Michael, Michael Moncler, my special guest, but uh, that's what I'm saying. The the letter the president sits out that the media run with it. These all and I, and I predicted this would happen when this thing started up. That they're going to start blaming all companies and looking at profits and calling people in and asking why you're making so much money and. Uh, and they do it because they want a perception out there. And it's uh, not old Joe doing this. It's not the government doing this. It's in the darn greedy oil companies. And that's I want. That's, that's why right. I want someone like you to come explain this because what you just explained, if you just got a, if you got a half a brain and can think about it, that makes sense. Then that's what's really happening. But you know, I don't think the oil companies, the media is not putting the microphone in front of them and said, explain what's going on so we can tell people what's happening. That's not the perception they want out there for people. Yeah, and look, I just gave you the little guy perspective. I will give you a big guy perspective. Right. I had a member company yesterday send me a letter, uh, their response to the president. And uh, I don't think this is um, – uh, I, I'm sure I can say who it is. It's ExxonMobil. And here's what they've done. In the last five years, ExxonMobil has spent $50 billion uh, to increase U.S. production 50%. Okay? Okay. Wow. Globally, they invested double what they earned. They invested $118 billion in new oil and gas supply on only $55 billion in net income. See, nobody During knows that, Mike. No, nobody right. knows that because yeah. you all not allowed to tell your stories to the media. they just allowed to tell the stories how profitable you all are. It doesn't make any sense. To right. And, and there's, a, there's a misnomer out there that the plants in the United States can only produce oil from OPEC, because that's how they were built years ago. Here's the last statement they make. During the downturn, they, in, they increased the refining capacity to process U.S. light crude by an additional 250,000 barrels a day. Wow. So those are the kind of things that major oil companies are doing as well that you, they're not going to get any credit for. You know, I mean, everyone's yeah. doing the, all that they can. Yeah, Mike uh, Monclaw, Louisiana Oil and Gas Association. You know, Mike, once again, the words you're using, I've not read this anywhere. i got to get people like you or Mr. Cloutier or somebody to fill me in. You talk to oil and gas people, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just sending a shame. There might be some money being made, but y'all not making all the money. Y'all not. They act like if, if, if profits are up triple, that they just put that in the bank and live high on the hog, and that's not the true story. That's not even the whole, That's not even close to half the story. Yeah, now they, it's a lot of it is, is right back invested in, into into more oil and gas. So, you know, if they try to, to take profits away, that's going to be less oil and gas coming on the market later because there'll be less investment going forward. Yeah, and you see, see, I was talking to my brother yesterday, and he, you know, he's retired, and and he said, "Man, my gas prices already shot up." But when we start talking about it, he said, "You know what, man? What's wrong with all companies making a profit?" And then we started. We had a conversation about how. How much they got to invest? How many how many years they go through tough times that they lose money? How many of them hang around? Right. And then the pressure, Mike. I want you to talk a little bit about the pressure put on by the Biden administration, the bureaucrat through the banks, where people can't hardly get money if they're going to associate with oil and gas companies that nobody else is talking about that as as well. Right. You talk about the ESG scoring, you know. So so banks to invest in oil and gas nowadays, they have they have this ESG scoring. Uh, that they have to go by, and if, if the score isn't satisfactory to the federal um, mandate, then really it, it's, it's telling banks not to invest in oil and gas. So, I mean, I don't know if you saw today, Harold Hamm, um, one of the you know, pioneers of the oil and gas world who owns Continental um, Oil and Gas, um, they took it public several years ago. He's getting ready to buy it back private because he just can't get anything done on the, on the public side. It's uh, wow. it, it's it's crazy. Yeah, Harold Ham getting ready to buy buy Continental back. His company, his family uh, owns eighty three percent of the stock, and he's probably just going to buy it all up. We are not only all not only ought to be investing in oil and gas and natural gas and fracking and everything that goes with it. We ought to be encouraging banks to lend so people can go out and make a living. And you know, energy independent for our company, we, a country, we we're so dependent on you guys. 
listen, without energy independence, we can't fight wars. We can't feed our people. We can't get goods and services yeah. across this country. Uh, that's that's the that's the thing that blows my mind. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think I mentioned to you before the the byproduct side of, of what we bring to the table is is the part that's never talked about because if there's no drilling for oil and gas in 30 years, how are they going to make a wind farm and a solar panel? Okay. Um, all, all the byproducts that we provide. Uh, it, it, they're, they're so numerous, it's uncountable. I mean, all, all day long you're using oil and gas products, and people don't really understand that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Mike, let me put you on hold. Let me take a quick break, come back, and give you a few more minutes. I got one tough okay. question for you. I got to have a little bit of fun with you. <laughs> right. so, yeah. so when we get back, Mike Monclaw, Louisiana Oil and Gas Association. Don't go nowhere, folks. A lot more Q&A with him. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Show. Great to have you with us as we rock and roll. We are honored to have Mr. Michael Monclaw joining us, head of the Louisiana Oil and Gas Association. And, uh, you know, Michael, the, 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 the only beef I'm going to have with you, Mike, and it's not really beef, but you said something, and I'm only going to disagree with one thing you said, and that's that we're going to see 250 a gas a gallon again. You can't see 250 a gas a gallon, a, a gallon of gas because of the Green New Deal. The goal is to get that sucker up to five, six, seven, so so electric looks good. It's devastating. They can't even charge stuff without gas and all. And you were making that point, but two fifty a gallon, yeah, we better reelect. We better put Trump, DeSantis, or somebody with some sense in there because with this group in here, they're doing this on they're doing this on purpose to the the very people that vote for them. Yeah, now you're, you're right about that. Um, I, I was more talking about the history of our product Absolutely. goes up and down. And, you know, so it's not necessarily like, you know, you could buy a Big Mac back in the day for a mm-hmm. dollar and now it's four dollars. It's never going to go back to one dollar. But gasoline does go back and it forth does. with the price of oil. And that's that was my point. But yeah, yeah. no, no, no. no. Let me back up because I'm messing with you more than anything else. But I but yeah. I did want you to comment on that. But you are correct. We've seen it go to four dollars and three fifty and then go back down to buck eighty. And the day that. Right. Uh, Trump was uh, that, that uh, election was taken away from Donald Trump. We were I paid dollar sixty nine, uh, filled up the exactly. other day for four sixty nine, and I'm approaching five dollars. And but I just wanted you to be able to, and you're doing it, <coughs> defend the company and all in gas and how good they've been for the state and for the country and for the world. And the United States was energy independent. We had everything we needed to grow our own food and energy independent. In less than 18 months, that's been taken away from us. Yes, yes. No, there's no question. The, um, the whole world has bought into all of the, you know, global warming, the climate change, the green, and, you know, the, the whole they, – they, they have succeeded in their goal to convince uh, the world of this issue. And it's, it's going to be a fight from here on out. But what they don't get is – what they're looking for is a more expensive energy than we already had. Oh, yeah, a lot, know, lot more expensive. Much more expensive. Yeah, yeah, you know, Mike, let yeah. me ask you a question. Just think. Let's just back up. So let's use the 250 term you use. If if gas prices were 250 a gallon, I'd say uh, the price of oil would be about eighty dollars at the, uh, you know, eighty dollars a barrel, uh, give or take. Right. You probably know better than I do. But at two two fifty, I was never uncomfortable. You get over four dollars, right. you get uncomfortable. We are, we're going to approach five or six dollars, and so I and then at eighty bucks a barrel, eighty five, y'all can do real well with that. Y'all can make money. We can move around. We can we can have a lot of people working in the industry and things of that nature. Now, not so much in Louisiana because of lawsuits and all the stuff we're going through, but overall, it would be good for everybody. This to get to where they want to go is hurting everybody in the United States. That's right. Yeah, like my, my um, chairman, Jim Justice, uh, he sent a letter to Senator Kennedy and he copied me on it uh, a couple of days ago talking about, you know, this windfall tax and, you know, what all we've been through over the last seven years. And, uh, you know, his point was we would rather $80 for a decade than $120 for two years. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we, this isn't good for anybody. No. But the, the policies of this administration have made this happen. And, well, you know, uh, you know, a- add the war to it. Sure, that had something to do with it, too. But, I mean, if you look at all the, the signs, all the charts, everything was on its way up. And, and 
you know, since the war, it's going up, what, 10, 15 percent? It was already up 90 yeah. percent. Well, you, well, you know yourself that what they were already – they ran that we want to get rid of fossil fuels. They ran on that. And okay. then you just mentioned when I mentioned going to a bank and all of a sudden they got a credit report. If, if they think you're too close to the oil and gas industry, basically, we're not going to give you any money. That's the – I can't believe in the United States of America – we're persuading people not to go be the best you can be, not to be energy independent. That, that makes no sense in any country, unless you're some communist yeah. country. That's right. No, you're right. Yeah, it's just, it's just it's disheartening. I know y'all are in the fight. Uh, when I saw the, the president send that out, I fell out laughing with his triple profits, because like, they, they, they know they can go to the media and they can put a perception out there that's not true and keep it simple, and people will buy into it. And anybody buying into the Green New Deal that we're going to save the planet from getting the stuff that y'all getting out the land, the ground, the ocean, and the sea, which God gave us, you know that, comes out the That's ground, right. it sure can't hurt nothing. He gave it to us because cheap oil and cheap, ener- cheap energy and cheap food has always been a st- staple in America. That's why we can move it's around and do the all the things we can do. Huh? Yep. It's taking the world out of poverty. It's taking us out of poverty, but if it keeps growing like it is, we're putting a lot of people in poverty, including a lot of middle class people. That's right. Unbelievable. Yep. Well, hey, man, we thank you, Mike. We'll probably be be back in touch with you again soon. Maybe I'll catch you when you're not vacation. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, so, so, hey, sorry I was two minutes late. I, I really thought you were calling me. My bad. <laughs> Mike, I didn't send you the number if I wanted you to call me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just saw that at the break. I looked. I said, "Damn, I am wrong." <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're not wrong. I'm glad it worked out. God bless, man. We we'll do it All again right, soon. Thank you, sir. All right, thank All you. Right, All folks. Right. When we get back, breaking news on the redistricting with Judge Dick and uh, Shake Snot and Cortez and what she told them and what they got to do now. And it's uh, almost hilarious if it wasn't so sad. We'll take a break. Be right back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show.